If you're a Texas landowner and you're interested in improving the quality of the genetics on your ranch, you can contact me at DeerAndWildlifeStories.com. This oh, yeah. guy's got everything it's going to take to reach get, that 300 mark. Yeah, he's going to be big. And, you know, he's so wild. I mean, look at him. <laughs> this is just so cool. It's not every day or it's not any day you can do this. I mean, when you really think about it, I mean, the, we got a big buck behind us here, another one walking up right here. I mean, these mule deer are pretty doggone incredible. I can see about 50 miles everywhere out here, everybody. I am in the middle of nowhere in South Dakota, and welcome to Deer and Wildlife Stories. My name is Keith Warren, and when I got here to South Dakota, I was expecting to find Mount Rushmore, but no Mount Rushmore where I'm at. But we're gonna introduce you to a mule deer buck by the name of Rushmore, and another giant mule deer buck by the name of George, and all his buddies. And I guarantee you, you're gonna love today's program. As a deer hunter, I wanna know all I can about America's favorite big game animal. That's why I became a deer farmer. Without deer farms, we lose our greatest resource for research and whitetail management. With them, we gain more knowledge than ever before. Join me as we discover the truth about whitetails and meet those who work every day to preserve this great species for future generations. My name is Keith Warren, and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. I've been looking forward to doing this show for a long, long time, and the reason why is because I just love mule deer. Uh, mule deer, there's something special about them. Uh, they're, they're rare as far as deer farming goes, but uh, for the hunter, the hunter that likes mule deer, they typically love mule deer. My name is Brandon Walker. I'm the manager here at Cedar Breaks Mule Deer Ranch. We're located in central South Dakota, about 40 minutes north of Midland and about 72 miles west of Pier. We are smack dab in the middle of nowhere, South Dakota. So right now we have uh, 108 deer on the farm, including our fawn group this year. As a guy who's traveled to deer farms from New Zealand to Canada to Mexico, hundreds of deer farms, I'm always trying to get that first impression when I reach a deer farm. What is the first impression I get? And the first impression I get here at Cedar Breaks is that the pens are big, really big. So here on the ranch, on the deer ranch, we have about 18 pens and we also integrated a new 10 acres. So we have six new pens. Every pen is generally between one and a half to four acres in size. Our goal is to produce 30 mule deer bucks at 200 inches ready to leave the farm. So for those of you looking at mule deer genetics, you've come to the right place. This is where you could start your herd at. Here at Cedar Breaks Mule Deer Ranch, we're willing to work with you to start your genetics here on our farm. So our customers want the best mule deer genetics in the world, and that's why they come to us. They want to produce big bodied mule deer, and that's what we're able to supply. So the ranch manager here at Cedar Breaks, uh, Brandon, he comes actually from the whitetail industry. And uh, I had an opportunity to ask him because he's raised so many whitetail deer and now has so much experience with the mule deer, what the differences are between the two different species. At birth or from eight to 15 hours, there really isn't much difference. You're gonna be tagging them, DNA in them, tubing them, sticking with what you have for your protocol and collecting samples from the fawns up to about 48 hours and then you're gonna bring them in. And that's when our differences are gonna come into play. The key thing with the mule deer fawns is biosecurity. They're very susceptible at a young state to things like Clostridium, E. coli, Coccidia. And it's for that reason that biosecurity and keeping the kennels clean and where your fawns are staying in a very clean environment and renewed soil, renewed water, renewed feed, and even the platform that they stay on has been cleaned and bleached and replaced. I know in this program, most of the farms are whitetail farms, we all know working with whitetail how skittish they can be. But on a mule deer situation, mule deer are just not that skittish. They're very calm to work with, very easy to dart or to inject with a jab stick if need be. Getting them into the alleyway and towards your shoot barn can be a very easy process compared to working with whitetail. 
The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds. Okay, Fred from Oklahoma wants to know uh, questions about mule deer. Okay, what's more valuable to deer farmers, a 200 inch mule deer or a 200 inch whitetail and why? Go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and say a 200 inch mule deer at that Absolutely. point. Absolutely, and why? And why? Because a 200 inch mule deer has a better market placement than a 200 inch whitetail. That's exactly right. The way I look at it, it's always about supply and demand. Fred, that's a good question. If y'all have a question for me, head on over to our website and hit the Connect with Keith tab. Green tags represent what now? Three-year-olds. You know, I'm just, I'm just shocked. I mean, the, you know, the, the more, I mean, I grew up hunting mule deer, loving mule deer. I, mean, I hunted whitetail too, but mule deer, mm. there was always something that was just fascinating to me about mule deer. Mm -hmm. And I think as we do the, the, the TV show, and we go to all these whitetail farms, or we've gone to elk farms, but we've never gone to a mule deer farm. Mm -hmm. And this is just fascinating to me because there are not, uh, there couldn't be a dozen mule deer farms in the country that are doing this. I mean, what do you think? Yeah, not even that, probably half a dozen at most. And, you know, we're just kind of blessed with the genetics that we have and where we established everything coming out of Canada. And I mean, look where we are now. We're about 10 years into it here and we're starting to see our progression in our three-year-olds. Well, see, the, the deal is that it used to be where the borders were open. But uh, these mule deer, I mean, mule deer are native to this land, but uh, yep. the genetics like this are not native to this land. I mean, well, they were at one time until hunters came right. and they killed them all. Yep. And then and what happens is hunters just do that, okay, because they're humans and they have greed. They want to kill big stuff and they kill the big stuff and then they kill the next biggest stuff and the next biggest stuff. And pretty soon you're letting the little guys do all the breeding. And it's for that reason that it's the same process with the mule deer breeders. They're, they're breeding for genetics. Okay, yep. they use genetics and in a little bit I want to talk to you about pedigrees and about how important it is for y'all to breed pedigrees. I mean there's a lot of similarities between whitetail breeding and mule deer breeding and as I'm spending the day here with Brandon I'm finding out that even though there's a lot of similarities there's a lot of things that are real different and on today's program what I want to do is I want to make sure that he shares with me and we share with you those things that are similar and those things that are different but uh, here it is, we are at the end of August, and you can see, I mean, the velvet is just starting to come off, especially this guy right here. I mean, it's tattered, he's hard antlered, and yep. most of them, I mean, within the next two weeks, everybody's gonna be hard, don't you think? Yeah, I would say two to three weeks here at most. Okay, so out of all these, uh, I want you to address your artificial insemination program, your breeding program. Okay. Uh, how important is that to you to be able to grow the genetics that you want? It's very important. We're getting to the point that we're needed to having some outcross with our genetics. Our herd is at the point that we're starting to see our stacking. We have uh, Chief. Chief is one of our established bucks back when, when Lee Smith you know, was able to grow a buck over 200 and some inches. And almost in every pedigree on our farm, every deer will have Chief. We'll have that in his lineage or her lineage at some point. And as we can see here with green one, it's Jericho. He's a needles son, but he also has chief on the bottom side again. So it touches every single animal here on the farm. And so as the breeding is tight on these mule deer, yep. you're looking to outcross these mule deer. And what happens, uh, and you'll hear the word outcross, whether you're talking about whitetail breeding or mule deer breeding. Uh, a lot of times we, we breed so tight, so tight, so tight, it's time to outcross. Yep. And when you outcross, that's when you really see them blow up. I yep. mean, so that's going to be exciting, but AI, artificial inseminating, is a big key factor in, in your program. Here. Yep. Okay, so how many does do you do a year? We do between 14 and 30 a year. Okay. This is going to be our first year uh, in a while now that we're going to actually do 30 deer or 30 doe for our AI, our lap AI this year. Okay. Now, folks, like I said, it's, it's way out in the middle of nowhere <laughs> out here, and it's beautiful country. It's the end of August, and... Uh, I would encourage you, if, if you're a whitetail breeder and you've ever thought about mule deer, heck, if you haven't thought about mule deer, I encourage you to probably give it some thought because there is a market, a big market for it. Let me ask you something. Could you sell every deer like within five minutes? Yep. I mean, it, 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 the, the demand is incredible and it doesn't take a big piece of property. It doesn't take a whole lot of money to get started. What it takes is a passion for the deer and a commitment to take care of the deer and grow the best, healthiest, biggest deer that you can. Give them a telephone number if they'd like to come see them. Yeah, you can get me at 605-567-3563 or give me a shout or text on my phone, my cell phone at 
695-0796. Okay, so these are the, the three-year-olds. All right, what we're gonna do now, uh, I wanna tell you something, the, the mature box that they've got in that pen back over there are giant. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take you to look at them. But first, we wanna take a look at some of the yearling bucks, because I don't think you're gonna believe how big these yearling bucks are, especially when you consider these are yearling mule deer bucks. If you're in Texas and interested in becoming a deer farmer, you can contact me for deer farming franchise opportunities right here in Texas at DeerAndWildlifeStories.com. Okay, so it's the first week of September on the deer farm. Uh, you'll notice the food troughs are empty, and the reason why is because we are knocking deer down right now. We're knocking bucks down, cutting their antlers off, so that way they can be protected from each other, and we can hold them over to next year. Right now, they've already got a bunch of them knocked down over here. The antlers are already cut off. We're going to reverse them and go get some more. Just another day on a deer farm. All right, so we were on our way over to take a look at the one-year-olds, and we came across this two-year-old right here. Check him out. This guy right here, blue one, and I mean, he is a unbelievable deer. Mm -hmm. Look at these antlers on him. Goodness gracious. I mean, you talk about some good genetics there. This oh, yeah. guy's got everything it's gonna take to Reach get, that 300 mark. Yeah, he's gonna be big. And you know, he's so wild. I mean, look at him. <laughs> this is just so cool. It's not every day or it's not any day you can do this. I mean, when you really think about it, I mean, the, we got a big buck behind us here, another one walking up right here. I mean, these mule deer are pretty doggone incredible. Look at this guy right here. He's saying, what'd you bring me to eat? <laughs> Look at the size of ears on him too. I guess this guy'd stay here long as long as I wanted to stay here and pet him, huh? Yep. Yeah, if I would have brought you a comb or a brush, he would have loved it. <laughs> you gotta admit that's pretty doggone cool right there. What? How you doing? Huh? <laughs> How you doing? Okay, so one year old bucks. Okay, um, I'm amazed. I mean, I, I'm, I'm looking at, there's a, there's a three by four right there. <laughs> Okay, and the grass, I mean, your, your pens are big. Is that deliberate? Yeah, those mealies, they need a little extra room. Really? Yeah. On average, we're acre and a half to four acres in size pens. Okay, and uh, I notice you do not have a mowed. I mean, what's the purpose of the tall grass? So that tall grass not only keep, keeps them in the cover, but it also keeps the flies out of them when they go to lay down. They can brush into that taller grass and keep the bugs off of them. Well, these deer, I mean, all of them, every one of the deer that we've seen so far are so calm. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think, I know that uh, you, you bottle raise some deer, mm -hmm. and but you leave some on their mothers too. Yep. Okay. 10 years ago, I started breeding mule deer in my whitetail herd on my farm. And so what we have is we have hybrids. And a lot of people around the country are, are growing hybrid deer now. Matter of fact, we just got out of Indiana and the guy's got some hybrid mule deer there. And uh, and there's a there's a trend, there's a lot of people, I mean, the, the Kennedys down in Alabama are doing stuff with mule deer. People up in uh, Pennsylvania are doing stuff with mule deer. There's a lot of whitetail breeders who are starting to play around with mule deer because mule deer are just cool and there is a potential future there. But these guys right here, they're all, they all have great pedigrees. I want to address the uh, North American Deer Registry. Every single program we talk about them and the importance it is to the whitetail industry, but it's also important to the mule deer industry and Very tell much. them why. Well, we gotta start getting our DNA into profiles. We're also starting off with learning about CWD and mule deer. So we need to identify those markers as we go along. In the last 10 years that registry has been developed, especially for mule deer, we needed hundreds of samples for these deer. The North American Deer Registry is, is, uh, it is the holy grail when it comes to the white-tailed deer, period. I mean, they, it is the holy grail. If you buy a deer and, and you're a breeder and it's not in the North American Deer Registry, you just might as well be just throwing your money away period, because if you're going to play in the breeding business, you better be on the North American Deer Registry. It's the same way with mule deer. Uh, we helped establish that. I mean, it was literally, I think it was a thousand different antler samples. We were getting all over the country, sending them in so they could develop the markers to be able to properly get the DNA and to take a look at the mule deer. And now there's so much good stuff going on with the registry that we're going to be able to tell so much more information. And the registry is just as important on the mule deer as it is the white-tailed deer. Yep. Out of all these deer in here, how many of them were born from AI versus how many of them were just natural cover? We had about five born from AI and everything okay. else out of the 15, so five out of the 10. Okay. Now, as far as deer go, I would assume that every deer on the farm is for sale? They are. Okay. 
All right, so this is pretty cool. I want to tell you all about it. Brandon has got lots of pins out here. They have expanded to the point that from an aerial shot, you can see how much real estate there is. They've got a lot of pins. If you're interested in getting in the mule deer market, okay, what they're willing to do is they're willing to sell you some deer and you can leave them here until you get your place set. Tell them about that. Yep, so we're willing to, for anybody that's wanting to start into the mule deer world or into this industry, we're willing to basically start you off here on our farm. We're gonna house your animals here for you for the first year or two until you can get set up on your place with your fence, with your waters, with all you need for feeding. You know. Uh-oh, they got a bite, what is that? That's that weather for Bad weather coming in? Yeah. Okay, let's finish it. We're, <laughs> we're in South Dakota, so it could be bad weather. So go ahead and finish that up. So we're willing, again, to house your deer here for the first the year or two that you need them here for until you can get set up at your place. And we're willing to work on that partnership for, like I said, as long as it would take. And we can go through pedigrees as breed them as you would see fit. If it's gonna be a doe or a buck, we can work that out. And we can also work out how our housing prices are gonna be as well. Okay, now uh, we're fixing to jump out of this pen and show you the big boys, okay? Yeah, but before we show you the big boys, I want Brandon to give a telephone number to you in the event you want more information about the mule deer industry. Hey, you can reach me at 605-567-3563 or my cell at 608. 695-0796. All right, I'm warning you, if you have a heart condition, you better take your pills, because you're gonna be blown away with what we show you next. <laughs> the Deer Farming Channel is brought to you in part by New Dart, leading the industry in accuracy. All right, so what do you think? They're big, aren't they? Look at this, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I've had a fascination with mule deer for my whole life. And I never knew that really, that something like this even existed, even though I wound up at do whitetail farms all the time. And I mean, I've been doing the hybrid mule deer, but mine aren't like this. These are full blood mule deer. All right, Brandon, tell everybody who they are. Let's start off with the one on the left, the, the red tag, who is he? So that's Bo. Bo is five year old. Bo is the son of Needles. And his and his bloodline he comes actually it's stacked with needles over shotgun. And shotgun was at one point a three hundred and so much mule deer out of Canada. Okay. So And it goes back to needles and you mentioned needles earlier, so listen up, listen up, because you've got these pedigrees and, and, and we can show you, boom, that's where it comes in. So okay, who's that big old buck in the middle? Who is that? George. 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 He's got a black tag on him. You know, George is six years old. Oh my gosh, he's gotta be 250 pounds. I mean, the mass on him is ridiculous. Look at that. <laughs> and he's still bulbed up on the end of some of the tines. He's still yeah. got some growing to do right here at the end of August, but he is just, he's like a gentle giant. Yeah. So where did he come from? Was he born here? George was born here. He's actually an AI baby. Really? Yep. Folks, that, that's huge. That's, that's huge when you think about it. I mean, a deer like that, I mean, there's a lot of people that have deer like that that'll buy a deer like that, okay? But imagine if you could grow a deer like that and he was born on your place. Would you be proud? You doggone right, you'd be proud. And I'm proud of you for doing that. That's cool that that deer was born right here. Now, okay, tell me who that white tag buck is because he is no slouch at all. So that's white 16, that's Rushmore. Rushmore Rush is four years old. Okay, and what kind of kin are these? Are, are they kin to each other or not? Rushmore is actually George's son. Really? Yep. So we can take a look at, at Rushmore's pedigree and see yep. George in the pedigree. George is, yep, George is a sire on top. Black too, another doe on our farm here is his mother who is still here and she's also six years old. And so Rushmore was born here as well? Rushmore was born here, here's a live cover. Oh my goodness. This is a phenomenal thing and one thing that amazes me is just how docile the mule deer really are. I mean, um, I mean, look at these guys. I mean, we can go up and some of them, we're actually touching these deer and they just, they're just, they're docile. But I can tell you one thing, don't let this fool you. The, their, their demeanor can change that quick when you start getting them in a handling facility. Yep. Big and this, this is something that, that uh, as deer breeders, we're all trying to help each other out and learn. And sometimes we learn the hard way, and but you have to you have to realize, you know, what this, we're always learning. And so what happens is with my hybrids, we wound up, we bred them, and I mean, they're calm and all, until all of a sudden we try to get them through the barn. And I mean, it's Katie by the door. Same way with these, isn't it? Yep. I mean, for whatever reason, when these deer get challenged, when they get pushed, they don't like it. And they're not gonna go around you, they're gonna go right through you. So they may be docile now, but, uh, 
if you push them, they're not going to be docile. Okay, so if y'all want to come out here and partake in the mule deer business, you want to see what this is all about. This is Cedar Brace Mule Deer Ranch. It's out here in central South Dakota. Brandon, give them a telephone number so they can call you and, and schedule a trip. This is something that, uh, that you need to do it. If you love deer, you're going to love to come out here. Give them a phone number. All right, so you can reach me at 605. 567-3563 or get me on my cell phone at 608-695-0796. This is uh, pretty incredible. You know, we've, we wound up uh, throughout the day, we've shown you lots of mule deer. And uh, I mean, you've got lots of does, bottle babies. I mean, gentle deer. There's one buck out here. He's a blue one. We showed him to you earlier in the show. And blue one is a deer that uh, he's got genetically everything it takes. Brandon says, he's going to be a 300 inch mule deer. So we can reflect back and show you that footage and take a look at him and Brandon knows. I mean, Brandon knows the genetics. He knows what Blue One's doing, but he knows what all these deer are doing. So if you want more information on Cedar Brakes Mule Deer Ranch, you can get a hold of Brandon Walker. He'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions or comments about the show, go ahead and post them below. And if you're not subscribed to our channel, please do so. My name is Keith Warren and you've been watching Deer and Wildlife Stories.